Hello, this is Haku Devine, and today we are reading a little story based on that tree we read about just yesterday. It's called Not All Fiction is Told. And yes, this story is about that tree. That tree that refuses to scream. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And maybe even scream in my comments for me. At least you won't refuse to scream for me, will you? Let's get into this. Tucked within an ancient forest, there was a grove of storytelling trees. They were beautiful beasts with twisting limbs that provided shelter to all who could lend an ear. Their roots spread far below the ground, allowing for dear Mother Nature to hear their hushed voices. They'd whisper to the westward wind as he flew by and cry to the grass below their tree their tales from 100 years ago. They spoke of beasts that had 10,000 arms, only visible to those who looked closely. They muttered about birds with wings that could cover up the skies. When the land was covered in flames and their skin was being burned away, they would speak of fates that had tucked themselves in the sky and suns far away. During the summer storms, they would give cover and warmth as whispered but about rain's harsh love. They would take delight in their guests as amazement. And, and would listen to the gifts of song given by the birds. Though these meetings would become less and less and the heat began to dwindle, soon they said goodbye to their friends and awaited their arrival after the melt. After the thaw, both bird and trees would greet one another with their newborns. Though one year, there was a scraggly tree in the center of this grove that no one would claim as their own. He did not cry when he sprouted from the ground, and he had no voice to tell his tales. He wouldn't whisper to the wind, and he never spoke to his dear mother below. His screams would go unheard when the flames tore through the forest floor and birds didn't dare to land near or on his bare bones. The songs of the others were gifted he wasn't allowed to hear, only the crow's harsh call while she finished a corpse. The beasts of the ground were terrified of this fragile or roots, and never once did they burrow close to a silent scrub. They wouldn't dare to hide under his limbs during the wicked storms, screaming that the shrub would topple and crush him alive. The trees is around him began to wonder if he was even a pine, perhaps he was fire out of the brush or the thickets below. But if he was, why weren't the a rabbits burrowing near him? Perhaps it was his shallow roots, maybe a beast held nearby. Could there be a predator lurking near his base? All questions were debunked upon their conception and shut down with answers of no. Though the trees did not stop, why wouldn't the birds and upon its scraggly limbs? Were they too skinny? Could they have been covered in thorns? Did they have poison in them? Again, all answers were shot down. And their faults were explained. So, they decided to ignore the silent shrub and let him grow. Years passed by, and the sight one grew to the size of a rearing horse. His appearance was now complete. A tw thousand twisted branches that had formed the maze of needles, and a rich blue-green had covered his body. Though the grove cared less and less, still they shunned him and ignored his roots, scratching stories and tales along the ground. The trees now hissed about the scraggly pine and mused about the sound of his voice. They howled and teased him, screaming wickedly about their views of his non-existent tongue. Toadish and crow-like were the taunts that the trees would scream until the day the two-legged beasts arrived. With the beasts for weapons, used mass or their ancestors far below them. The trees screamed and cried, but the hunters carried on. Only paused to howl out commands of silence to the grove. Their roots ripped from the ground with great cries and their branches hit the grass with a pitiful crunch. More cries filled the forest, and the beasts of the ground had scattered. The birds split into a thousand flocks, covering their young's eyes as they took off. Howls filled the forest as the two-legged beasts drove contraptions, carrying the dead along the forest's bare floors. Wails of the grass could be 
heard and the tears of the saplings could be seen, though the silent one stayed still. The hunters soon took notice to the silent one, but they had much else to do. One after the other, the trees hit the earth, all crying out to their, their mother far down below. But soon, it all stopped. The hunters glanced over at the silent one and, why, and wondered why it had made a noise. They looked at one another and set one forth to observe the beast. They approached the pine and looked around at short base, only to be greeted with the, uh, the slew of sorrowful of words. A will dedicated to no one at all. The hunters stopped when they saw the desperate pleas. Their hearts rung hollow, and they took pity on the beast. They approached it with a weapon and set it into his young flesh. Apologizing for any pain they may cause, they saw it sliced within its base, daring not to say a word. Not to say a single word. One hummed a song, that of the doves, of that had stood clear of his twisting arms, and another whistled as if he was a westward wind. Tears began to form on its bark as they slashed away his skin. The young pine looked up at the sky and noted that the fates were swirling above. Soon enough, a final slash came. His bare body crumbled down to the cold ground below. His roots rose from the rocks, causing him to tumble to the ground with hushed cracks. Pine looked up one last time to see nothing more than a single hawk looking down upon his farm. At last, his mind had left into the darkness. The hunters lifted him up and carried his corpse away to the hollow halls of the factories. Inside, they stripped his skin from his bones and ripped his flesh into a thousand pieces. From his flesh and bones, they made a fine pulp from this. They created a thousand books filled with fairy tales. Perhaps he was meant to, uh, to be an author. But that doesn't explain why that one tree won't scream. That was the tale. Not all fiction is told. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Remember to scream for me. I have absolutely no clue what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Until then, goodbye!